Hi guys, it's Shazai. Got a Glock video for you today. I just got this gun, so it's the unboxing. Let's see, what the hell? I'll be damned if they didn't give me the wrong one. Obviously I'm being a smart ass. I don't think a gun shop would make that kind of a gross error. Uh, I just had my brownie bookmark in a Glock case, that's all. Because <clears throat> it fits. So, this is a browning butt mark camper. And it is a fine pistol, if I do say so myself. Uh, there for a while I was in the market for a uh, for a 22. I don't beat the hell out of this one. Uh, it is uh, the black and polymer gripped camper. It uh, obviously is a Browning. I paid somewhere near 300 for it. And the reason I like this pistol is because it is much like a 1911 uh, control wise. So uh, let's see if I can get this angled right. I'm trying a new camera setup and uh, it's kind of working and then again it's kind of awkward for me to move around and uh, show the details and everything. <clears throat> so it's a 10 round 22 long rifle uh, pistol. They have sporting carbines of these, carbines, carbines, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so, I'm going to sit down here. <clears throat> Hopefully that doesn't mess anything up. I've already knocked the camera off once. There we go. So, this is, uh, it's got one, uh, it's for right-handed people because, well, you got your safety there and your slide lock here. And as you can tell, there's nothing in it. There's no magazine. Uh, so, it's your slide release. And, uh, yeah. It's a bull barrel. And it's got a fiber optic front sight. So, it's 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 a nice, accurate gun. I'm thinking about putting flutes in the barrel, in the side of the barrel, just for the sake of doing it. And um, uh, to lighten it up just a little bit. Uh, I have the material to do that at the moment. You know, I have a mill. But, uh... I have access to a meal. I don't have one yet. <laughs> I would certainly like to have one, especially as expensive as they are. Speaking of expensive, uh, I've heard a lot of people complain about these guns and their um, their magazine prices. Now these are thirty. And these are thirty dollars a piece, somewhere near that neighborhood. Let me tell you something. For a magazine that is this sturdy for a twenty-two long rifle. I wouldn't complain about 30. Right? I had a Sig Mosquito and I was paying $30 for polymer magazines. I went out, I tried one, it didn't work worth the squat. All right. <clears throat> uh, the lips were cracking prematurely on them uh, and you couldn't really drop them, you had to baby them and that was just my experience with them. So uh, that was one of the breaking points for me is uh, <clears throat> I had to have something that could take a little bit of planking abuse. Obviously, I'm not out in the sandbox, you know, blasting ragheads, so, uh, with this thing. But I wanted to be able to have drop-free magazines and me not worry about the magazines getting damaged a whole lot from dropping on dirt and all that. Uh, a little bit of finish wear is fine, but when you start cracking things, that's when things get bad. Now with metal, obviously you're not going to have that problem as much. So $30 for a magazine on this is pretty nice, in my opinion. Uh, 
trust me, I know expensive magazines, and that's the Desert Eagle magazine for the 44, and uh, they, they're pretty expensive. And then you can get into the Chris Super V mags, which run about $70 assembled. Uh, I use that in my Glock 30, so, um, yeah. And I've only managed to buy one of them so far. <clears throat> because I have other projects that I just don't need more than one Chris Super V mag. I didn't need the first one, but it's a fun range toy. I tested it today. It's 100% reliable. Uh, even with Tula ammo. And back to this gun though. It's very accurate. It's a target style gun uh, with dual purpose of, you know, fiber optic front, black adjustable back, target sights. Um, it's very ergonomic. When you hold it in your hand, it just feels like it belongs there, you know. It's got these nice thumb rests on both sides, and uh, it, it's it's very pleasant to shoot. You know, pressed rubber checkering with the emblem, and uh, the only thing I didn't necessarily care for on this pistol was the slide serrations. They had half they have ball end mill cuts for slide serration. And then they're, you know, the serrations are put in after that. Uh, this is, uh, I thought that was going to be a deal breaker. Because I thought it would be less uh, tactile to grab it because of the target sight and everything. be honest with you, uh, it hadn't been all that bad. I can, you know, I can get a good grasp on it. You know, so... Uh, and there's not really enough meat here to put more on it, so it kind of sucks, but, you know, you deal with what you got. And this is the best 22 pistol I've encountered thus far. Uh, it's eaten everything I've fed it, so Remington even. God forbid I use Remington, but uh, even the subsonics, uh, Remington subsonic 22s function through this without really any much of a hitch. Um, it was surprising to me because, yeah, it was, I expected it to jam, you know, be a jam o -matic when you put subsonics in it, but it wasn't. So, uh, overall for $300, the fit and finish is nice, wonderful, and uh, the trigger pull isn't all that bad. I, I have people i uh, wanting to have trigger jobs done to the browning butt marks, and I'm thinking, why? So, now there is one other thing about this gun I don't necessarily like, but can be changed if you so desire, is uh, the magazine disconnect. I can't pull the trigger. It disconnects the trigger if there's no magazine in there. So, you know, you can't, and the safety is off, so... It won't fire. California kind of ball. So the trigger pull is obviously single action, so it's pretty light and crisp. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's a it's it's a nice pistol. If somebody wants to learn on how to uh, shoot. Uh, pistols, this would be a wonderful pistol to go with uh, as a start out pistol. It's got the heft of a full size 45, 9mm, uh, 5 inch barrel, you know, that kind of setup. And it's got, for a 1911, if you're wanting to put them on a 1911 platform, <clears throat> it would be easier to do something like this if you just don't go with, if you don't want to go straight with a 1911-22 these days. Uh, I bought this before the 1911-22 uh, craze came along. Uh, ran real big into it, you know, GSG and uh, Chiapa and all that started making them. And, you know, for the 42011, 
uh, so this is this is nice. This is uh, this has close to what you would expect for 1911 slides, uh, slide releases in the same place, and your you know your safety is in your uh, manual safety is in the same place. Magazine release same place. Magazines are drop free, so it's it's a nice training platform. Uh, I'd recommend it to anybody. Um, even with the magazine disconnect, you know, I'd still recommend it. So, I give this gun a thumbs up. That's, that's my view on it. That's my ramblings about it. You know, uh, fiber optic front sights are wonderful for outdoor shooting, which is mostly what I end up doing anyway. So, this is a nice, wonderful sight. This is, uh, great for shooting bowling pins. Put that green dot on top of an orange bowling pin and sucker's gone. <laughs> uh, so, this assembly can be a bit of a irritant on these, but it's doable. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I don't know of any left-handed uh, ones, but I'm sure if you're going for a left-handed person, you can get a left-handed 22. Uh, but this is primarily for right-handed people, from what I can tell. Obviously, a left-handed person could shoot it if they can deal with the brass coming across their face, you know, and just coming out of the ejection port across their face. But uh, a lot of the left-handed shooters in my family, the women in the family are left-handed sh shooters. And... This is a fun gun for them, but every now and then they'll catch one, you know, in the wrong spot, like down the shirt. So, and that's funny to us, but not to them. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're looking at this for a right-handed beginner shooter, these are great. Now, disassembly on these field stripping, you do have to watch out for the bushings that are in these for the top strap. I have not done anything to this pistol other than shoot it. I have modified it, hadn't done anything to it other than clean it. Uh, aftermarket parts are plentiful. Uh, barrels, trail light barrels from Tactical Solutions. Uh, new grips, you can get wood grips, you can get right handed only grips with the big wide thumb rest. Uh, nice, pretty much fit, fit to your hand kind of thing. But those are nice, but they're not my cup of tea at the moment. And I don't like tea anyway, so <laughs> yeah. That you know the factory grips are nice and ergonomic. So and it has that, that swept back nineteen eleven feel to it. Uh it's got a little bit of the uh curved mainspring feel. So if you're used to the GI I think this would be a good run for you. Uh, with a little bit more ergonomic hand feeling. So, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, constructive comments only, please. I will not tolerate trolls. Uh, I will delete your post as soon as I possibly can if I see non-constructive comments or any of that. <clears throat> I've had problems with it, and... I'm not going to put up with it, you know. My videos get a mediocre amount of uh, views, so that's fine. I'm doing this for fun. And if you don't like it, you can suck eggs, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, I hope somebody out there enjoyed it, but if not, I don't care. So, yeah, that's uh, the Browning Buckmark. Wonderful buy. If I can get one, if you want to shoot a lot of ammo and get real good at shooting, because this is a gun you can do it with. It sure helped me. Have a good day.